Piedmont. Good morning, church. Oh, yeah, September 3rd, 2024. Mm. As you know, I've been out there prayerful and Jack Lake um, campaigning for Kamala Harris and the coach put my two cents in and that's what I guess we all have to do powerful prayer he will call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him Psalms 91 verse 15 what are the possibilities of prayer according to the divine revelation? The necessity of prayer is so coexists with man. Nature cries out in prayer. Man is, therefore, prayer is. God is, therefore, prayer is. Prayer is born of the instinct, the needs, the carving, and the very being of man. God put no limitation on his ability to save through true prayer. The possibilities of prayer are linked to the infinite recognition, uh, recognizing and to the ultimate power of God. There is nothing too hard for God to do. Dear God, because all things are possible with you, I know that the possibility, possibilities of prayer are endless. All we have to do is to ask. Amen, amen, amen. God bless, God bless. Today, my text is coming from Revelation chapter, um, Revelations chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. The cure for the common cold. The letters to the seven churches can be interpreted three different ways, church poetically, church history, Pentecost to 100 AD, uh, particularly to a literate church and to individual church throughout history, personally to every believer. These seven churches these seven messages should speak to each individual as well as to the needs of this church here. But do not forget that this church went to a real active church, Ephesians. The vanity of fear of Asia, the super metropolitan of Asia, uh, famous three ways. One, religion, the temple of Diane, seventh wonder of the world, bank, art, sin, two, commercially, port city, military city, industrial city, three, politically, and free city. Self-rule, it was here that Paul confounded the church in Ephesians Act 18. He spent three years here preaching and training the people. Apollos preached here, uh, ministered here, pastors here by Timothy and later by John. A church greatly blessed by much spiritual light. Yet there were a church with a problem. Jesus came to them 
and diagnosed them as cold and fallen. Verse 1 identifies the speaker of Jesus. He is walking in his church, seeing and judging. We are reminded that Jesus is in full control. Let's listen in as Jesus gives them the cure for the common cold, the faithful works of the church. They were standing up to the task, a busy church, works what they should be, labor, work to the point of pain involving personal sacrifices, patience, endurance, opposition, did not phrase them, announcements. They were standing up for the truth, fundamentally. They hated more evil, practice separation, uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 7. Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, verse 11 to 13, they hated ministerial evil, put preachers to the test, 12 apostles, authenticating of miracles, tongues, healing, etc. Uh, uh, two verses, a priestly set, two fellows of Nicholas who taught that to know what sin was about. You had to experience it. They were standing in the test. They preserved in the face of opposition. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, obedi uh, obedience and active on the surface, but internally they were a sick people. They were affected by the common cold notice. The fatal weakness of the church, the virality of their passion was gone. Uh, they were a saved and serving people, but they were motivated for service was were wrong. Prestige, position, reputation, duty, fear, love is the only worth, whole, worthwhile motive. They had lost the honeymoon love. Remember salvation, the excitement where it is. Like Martha, they were so busy they had no time for Jesus. Lack of love is plain to see. It manifests itself in several ways. Enthusiasm, endurance, attention, um, joy, witness, praise, study, prayer, all suffer. When you have a call toward the Lord, actually it is a backslided state. The variety of their passion was gone. Jesus declared they were, they, uh, they, they have fallen. The lack that, cl that cleanses uh, to him they had, oh, uh, unworthy. They look impressed, but inwardly their works were fake. They came from a wrong and rap motive, the forceful warning of the church. Love must be absolutely paramount. Uh, Jesus says they need to consider their things. Remember, church, consider where they brought them from and where they used to be with him. Remember the excitement, the joy, the drama. Repent. John chapter, 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 gets right with God. Repent. Fall back in love with the Lord and his work. Be motivated by love. Removal, no love for Jesus, no light for Jesus. Church uh, or, or a Christian without love is false witness. They give a false signal of what Jesus is all about. Jesus will not tolerate a church without love. It might function, but there will be no testimony, no power, no presence of God. 
they might as well be dead and gone. Ephesians that they love must be absolutely personal. Jesus appears to the individual. We, a saved one by one, and we will be restored one by one. To love the Lord and the Lord's work is a personal decision. In the conclusion, is your love what it ought to be? Why do you why do you do what you do? If it isn't out of love for Jesus church, then your motives, regardless of what it is, is absolutely wrong. Jesus tells them to endure and when it is finished, they will receive blessings from the tree of life that is in heaven. What a blessing. After all he has done for us, how can we not love him? Do you need a rival of love? Do you need to experience the cure for the, for the all too common cold? If so, then Come to Jesus right now and experience a new honeymoon with the Lord. That is the word of God that leaned on me last night and I bring it to you church from uh, the chapter Revelations, the last book in the Bible. Oh Lord, oh Lord. I finish with this unite in prayer. May God himself the God of peace sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blindless, blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23. Holiness means holiness. God wants holy people who are wholehearted and true for his service and for the work of prayer they, these are the sort of people God wants for leaders and they are the kind out of which the praying classes form church when a person prays every part of his body of his being unites with God in prayer Man unites in all the essentials and acts of piety. Soul, spirit, and body must unite in all things pertaining to the life and guideless, guideless, godlessness. Dear God, I want to be a part of your praying people. Make me whole and holy for your service. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Again, if this message has been a blessing to you, find yourself a Bible-based church and become a part of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen, amen, amen.